Madam Deputy Speaker, all children, no matter what their background or which education and training provider they choose, deserve a safe environment in which they can learn. I'm sure that every member of this House can agree that nothing is more important than the safeguarding of our children and the promotion of their welfare. This bill is to ensure that all young people are protected by the same safeguarding regardless of the education or training provider they choose. I am proud that in my constituency we have the outstanding New College Durham which is one of the best further education colleges in the country. And I'd just like to take a moment to highlight New College's continued success in the field of technology. It's one of the few institutes of technology in the country, and I think we can all congratulate New College for that. New College, like all further education colleges, has a legal duty to ensure that the education and training they deliver protects their students. They also have a legal duty to consider any guidance issued by the Secretary of State. And I'm aware that New College is doing an excellent job of promoting the welfare of the students, and I'm sure that they will continue to would, do so. Would you give away on that point? Yes, I'll give away. Thank you. I'd like to congratulate my honourable friend for introducing such an important and considered bill, and I'm pleased to be a co-sponsor. Um, as a Governor of Luton Sixth Form College, I know how crucial this extension of statutory safeguarding arrangements is to ensure all young people in further education get the best in life. Um, and on that point, does she agree with me that the increasing level of mental health issues amongst our young people, that it is important that all those in post-16 education are protected by equitable safeguarding protocols to ensure they receive support and have the best possible chance of succeeding at their studies and training? Thank you. I'd like to thank my honourable friend for raising a, a really important point. Um, and I know from a recent visit to New College that the... Um, do take the mental health of their students very, very seriously indeed. However, not all young people in my constituency pursue further education uh, through New College. Others choose to do an apprenticeship delivered by a training provider. In the last academic year, 50 students under the age of 19 started an apprenticeship in my constituency. These apprentices could be training for a career in health and social care, supported by Northern Care Training, an independent provider. They could also be working towards a career as a plumber with South West Durham Training, another independent provider. However, I was concerned to find that legal safeguarding duties do not apply to apprentices where training is delivered by independent providers in the same way as they do for those at an FE college like New College. While independent providers do have safeguarding requirements as a condition of funding, the apprentices of these providers are not protected by the law in the same way. This is clearly wrong and something has to be done about it. Protecting the welfare of our constituents is vital and this is why it is so important that this bill must pass. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. Tid, uh, I thank her for, for giving way um, and congratulate her on, on bringing this bill to the House. On a related point to apprenticeships, I wonder whether the Honourable Member agrees with me that the inclusion of providers of T-levels in this bill underlines that T-levels are a very important option in education, that they should be considered as of equal merit to more academic qualifications. Thank you. Um, I'd like to agree with my honourable friend, and I will come on to that in, in this speech. That so T levels are an extremely important uh, part of uh, education, and in fact, there will be a lot. They'll be rolled out a lot more in the, over the coming years. Well, this is exactly what I was going to say in the next paragraph. Read your mind. <laughs> yeah, read my mind there. <laughs> exactly. So, as New College Durham is going to be one of the first colleges to provide T-levels from September. This is of a, a vital importance to my constituents and I'm sure to my right honourable friend too, um, as it will be all over the, the country. 
But again, the legal safeguard and duty that protects these T-level students will vary depending on the provider the student chooses. As MPs, we have a duty to make sure that safeguard and laws apply to all children equally. And this is not the case at the moment. And I ask for your support in helping me to fix this loophole in the law. My bill would correct the, in, the existing inconsistencies in safeguarding arrangements by extending the legal duty to cover all publicly funded providers of post-16 education. This will directly impose legal safeguarding duties onto 16 to 19 academies and make the Secretary of State for Education directly accountable for ensuring that all funding agreements with specialist post-16 institutions and independent providers include proper safeguarding duties. The Secretary of State will also be directly responsible for ensuring that funding agreements with apprenticeship and T-level providers include safeguarding duties. This is especially important as over the next two years there will be 113 new T-level providers. But this expansion can only happen safely if the right safeguard and duties are in place. These issues are not party political. <coughs> Across England, this bill will place safeguarding duties on an estimated 30 16 to 19 academies, 100 specialist post-16 providers and 1,000 independent providers. My bill will help to ensure that all young people will have the same safeguard and protections under the law, regardless... I'll give way here. Can I congratulate the Honourable Lady on an excellent bill, uh, which I am sure all my colleagues fully support. One of the things that I'm passionate about is ensuring equality of opportunity, and that after 16 as well as before then, Children with special educational needs or on the autistic spectrum do not stop having those, those um, safeguarding issues at the age of 16. So would, would you agree with me that these proposals are excellent in equalising opportunity and ensuring that support is in place for further education so everybody has the chance to succeed? Thank you. Thank you, my honourable friend. I totally agree. And that's one of the reasons why this, this bill is so important. Because... Um, the, the new T level would be um, the, there's likely to be more young children and young people who maybe don't go down that ac academic route and they will be uh, using uh, some of our colleges and they are absolutely the most vulnerable in our society. So that's a really important point and that is really why we need, need to pass this bill. Um, and indeed my bill will ensure that all young people will have the same safeguard and protections under the law, regardless of which education or training provider they choose. You know, I believe that safeguard and responsibilities are too important not to be protected by the law. And I hope that you will join me in safeguarding our young people and giving parents the peace of mind that they deserve. Yeah. Yeah.